I want to get right to the word of God on today. We are in the book of Exodus 23 and 25. I'm going to read three passages of scripture. Um, and I need you to bear with me today because I won't be given a sermon in the traditional sense. But uh, I, I feel like I have an assignment. And uh, it, was, it was birthed and then it, on yesterday and then it was confirmed on this morning. Um, so let me read this, I guess, let me read this message. I got this email on yesterday, it says, good morning, pastor, went to the doctor for follow-up uh, on my thyroid count, and it has gone up. Don't know what the devil is trying to do, but my TS and my TSH blood count. One is too high and the other one is on borderline so I need meds. I have to take another blood test at the last week of July before my doctor appointment on the 1st of August. Pastor, I'm probably not supposed to have this surgery uh, and I'm supposed to just be strong for my husband who is also sick and my daughter. But I was a little depressed. Oh my God. And I took bed on yesterday afternoon and I got up at 11.45 p.m. The enemy tried to steal my joy. Yes, I got up and prayed and say, I will live and not die. Yes. And I shall get over this hurdle that's trying to get in the way of my health. Pastor, prayer changes things. I'm only human. I got a little depressed, but I know I got joy, and I will overcome it in the name of Jesus, along with my church revolution, blah, 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 blah. As I read this, something struck me. The Bible says, and Jesus looked on the multitudes, and he saw them, and he had compassion on them, and he started to heal the sick. Because he looked and saw so many people afflicted and suffering and struggling. Then I was standing here in the midst of praise and worship and Philippa came and she embraced me and she said, Pastor, I struggled. I fought so much in my body this week. It was just a difficult week. And as I read this message on yesterday, something started to stir within me. And uh, the Holy Spirit caused me to deviate from what it was I, would, I thought I would be sharing on this morning. Because we have to attack the spirit of infirmity and sickness in the body of Christ. And I want to share some things and I want to build your faith. And then we're going to uh, see what the Lord, how the Lord leads and directs us. Don't take the next three days of prayer and fasting lightly. This is no joke and this is no game. In fact, if I have time today, I want to share with you some of the physical benefits of fasting. That fasting resets your spirit and your body. So fasting does just, doesn't just have spiritual benefits. It also has physical benefits. And I believe this week is more than just about what God is going to do in the spirit. It's also about what God is going to do in the physical, temporally in our lives. So I want, to, I want to read this because I want to show you how powerfully the scripture speaks to healing. I want to show you how powerfully the scripture speaks to healing. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to be believing God for in this congregation. Exodus 23 and 25 says these words. And you shall serve God. The Lord your God, watch this, and he shall bless your bread and your water. Watch this, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Hear me. He says, you will serve the Lord your God, and in serving him, I will come in the midst of the congregation 
of people who are serving me and I will remove sickness from their midst. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, serving the Lord should result in a healthy congregation. I ain't giving you my opinion. I ain't giving you my thoughts. I'm telling you what the scripture says. We shouldn't be serving the Lord and have a sick congregation. But ladies and gentlemen, whatever you settle for, you have to live with. Whatever you accept, you will never change. And when God gives you truth and gives you principle, you have to get radical in your spirit, radical in your faith, and tell the devil he's a liar. This isn't what God told me. This isn't what God promised me. And I'm not settling for it. I'm going to read it one more time. And you shall serve the Lord. Some translation says you will worship the Lord. And he will bless your bread and your water. That's prosperity. Mm, that's what? Pros. That's God making provision for you. And then he says, and I will take sickness away from your mix. As I declare this word this morning, I'm believing God that sickness all throughout this congregation, things you don't even know in your body, God is going to take it from our midst. I rebuke premature death in this church and I declare your quality of life will not be hindered by the spirit of sickness and infirmity because this book says if we serve God, and listen, it used to be where all the people are struggling with infirmity and sickness. But there's such a plague in our nations that even our young people are experiencing cancer in their teenage years. But I got a word from God today that if you serve the Lord, he says, I'll come in the midst of you and wherever I see sickness and infirmity, I'll grab it and I'll take it. Now I need some faith to come in this room now. For some of you who may say, well, Pastor, I ain't got no sicknesses. One waiting to jump on you right now. But if you receive this, not only will it not come, oh, bless it. Not only will God take it, but God will make you immune from hereditary sicknesses that is in your ancestral bloodline. I want the devil to know that there's a people who serve the true and living God. And we refuse to settle. I need you to agree with three people and tell them, get ready for a healthy body. Prepare yourself for a healthy body. Tell them, believe God for health. Now, some of y'all look like y'all come, the, the, the theater thing getting to y'all, and y'all look like y'all come to watch a movie. But I came for spiritual warfare because the devil won't put some of you in a grave before your time. But God got an assignment on your life. God got a purpose for your life. He didn't put you here to live and die. You came here to fulfill an assignment. And the devil don't want it fulfilled. But I stand in the face of every adversarial demonic force today. And I declare life over this congregation. You shall live and you shall not die. You got to work with me now. And you shall declare the glory. Wrong key and all. Raise the key. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody worship him a second here. Lord of answer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That sickness that's been threatening your life and your future, threatening the life of your children, threatening the life of your family. I want you to raise your faith level today and tell the devil I'm going to die one day. But you ain't going to determine when I die. And you ain't going to determine how I die. I shall live. And I need a couple of warriors to rise in their spirit and declare with me the day in agreement. Some of you can't receive this because you believe.
the doctor's report is your final report and you believe the doctor has more to tell you than God does well I came to tell you the God who gave you your body has a way of repairing your body look at your neighbor and tell him the God who gave you your gave you your body has a way of repairing your body if this hard body can give you another one if this kidney body can give you another one if this liver body can give you another one if he gave you the first one i believe he's able to do miracles and give you another one yes lord yes lord now it ain't gonna hurt us none to believe god and it's going to hurt us any to trust God. All right, let's read this. Psalm 105, 37. Psalm 105 and 37. If I get to talk about fasting, I may not get to it, but I want to challenge everybody this week. We're going to be a part of this fasting, this fast, this period of consecration. I want to challenge you because we're going from six to six. Am I right? But during the times you can't eat, I want to challenge you to reduce or eliminate sugar from your diet. Sugar is a killer. We're eating ourselves to death. That's part of why God implemented fasting. To reset the body from the things we put into the body. That's killing the body. So a lot of things you're dealing with in demonic is your diet. Fasting is a Christian discipline designed to prolong your life and strengthen your body. Now most of you don't make up your mind you ain't fasting because you, 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 I can't do that. But you want God to give you life. But you don't understand he gives you principles so that you can see his promises. And the principle of fasting is a means through which God fulfills his promise of healing and longevity in your life. Fasting will slow down the aging process. And lengthen your life. All right, let's read Psalm 105, 37. The Bible says, he brought them forth or brought them out. How? You got it? With silver and with gold. Where he brought them from? Egypt, right? He brought them out of Egypt. And how did he bring them out with? He brought them out. That's deliverance. With silver and gold, that's prosperity. And then what the Bible says, there was not one feeble, not one feeble person. You mean out of millions of people, God brought them out and not one of them was sick? Not one of them was weak? Not one of them were ailing? Not one of them was struggling? You trying to tell me they had senior saints in the congregation. 80 and 70 and 90 and 65 and not one of them even though they had age on them they were not feeble or ailing or weak ladies and gentlemen you don't want to die sick you could you you supposed to die as a believer because you are finished with your life's assignment all or young. Finally, let's read Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Deuteronomy 7 and 14. You got it? Oh, they're marking the day. Watch this. Read it with me. Thou shalt be. Blessed. Thou shalt be what? Blessed. Thou shalt be what? Blessed. Please touch your neighbor and tell them what they are. Tell them you are, tell them, tell them what they are, tell them, tell them you are, tell them you are, you are not stressed, you are not sick, you are not defeated, you are not depressed, you are not a victim, you are, you are what? Come on, change your language, change your narrative, let's get an atmosphere, let's get it in the room. You are what? Blessed. How? 
above all people. <laughs> there shall not be male or female unproductive among you or among your cattle. Now watch this in verse 15. This is, this is amazing to me. Here's what it says. And the Lord will take away from you. He's talking to the congregation of Israel now. He says, the Lord shall take away from you. What? Oh. How many? Oh. How many? Oh. And will put none of the evil diseases in the world which you know upon you. But watch this. I lay them on people who hate you. Lean and lean and tell them I love you too much. I care for you too much. So do your best not to hate me, not to come against me, not to attack me. Because everything God taken off of me. God, the Holy Spirit told me on yesterday. That's what brought me to this a message today. To challenge this congregation to believe him for and pray for 100% total healing and health in Revolution Church. If you with me on that, I need you to give a bigger praise than that. In fact, get radical and say, no sickness in this room. None in this chair would I sit in. First of all, none in this chair would I sit in. And none in this room. I drive out every wicked spirit of infirmity. What has come to try to cut my life short and reduce the quality of my life. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Hear me good. Jesus doesn't just save people. He does more, Davina, than save people. Jesus saves, but that ain't all he does. He heals, he delivers, and he prospers. In the same way he saves the soul, he heals the body. And he prospers your life. These three things, ladies and gentlemen, go together and are essential for salvation and the fulfillment of your divine assignment on the earth. He will heal you. He will prosper you. And he will, he will save you. He will prosper you. And he will heal you. It's a threefold combination. You're not just supposed to be saved. You're supposed to prosper. And you're supposed to experience healing in your body. But faith coming by and hearing by, if we don't preach it, you won't believe it and you won't see it. A person may ask, what does healing have to do with being, with, what, what does healing have to do with faith? Or being saved the answer is simple saved or salvation in the Greek is the word sozo s-o-z-o -O. simply means to make well or to be made whole physically mentally and spiritually it includes healing by his stripes and forgiveness of our sins through the cross Healing is just one side of the coin of being saved. Forgiveness of sins is the other side. So on one side of the coin, he forgives your sins. On the other side of the coin, he heals your body. So healing, my brothers and sisters, is supposed to accompany salvation. It, how you could believe God could forgive your sins, but you don't believe God could heal your body. The same power that forgives sins is the same power that can heal your body. 
That's how you have to believe him to forgive your sins. And you believe by faith I am saved. You have to now take that same faith and transfer it. And say if God could save me. The same God could must heal me. And if I believe I am saved despite my struggles. I believe I am healed despite the pain that I feel. So watch this. You save right? But you still make mistakes. You have sins. You were not perfect. You think thoughts. We go and put a, a, a if we could, we put the thoughts in this room on this screen right now, all kind of things. You will be shocked at our person who just finished shouting on the side of you, what they, what they think about you. You will be, she just making so much noise on the side of me. I don't know why she doesn't sit down and be quiet and stop making all this noise. You will be shocked out of your wits. But watch this. Despite your failures, do you not yet still believe you are a believer, you are a Christian, and if you die today, you go into heaven? Well, you have to transfer that same belief to the healing of your body. That even though I feel pain in my body, I feel sicknesses in my body, I believe by his stripes I am so I don't let my failures disturb my faith in salvation. So I am not allowing pain to disturb my faith for healing. Weak and all, but I'm healed. Pain and all, but I'm healed. Struggling to get out of bed, but I believe I am made whole. Mentally, physically, Emotionally. So healing is connected with salvation. Remember when Jesus healed the, par the paralytic man. The Pharisee objected to him saying thy sins be forgiven. Jesus forgave the sins of the paralytic. Then he also healed him to prove that he had authority and power to both forgive and heal. If you are forgiven, then you need to begin to believe you are also. Healed. Here's what James 5 and 13 through 18 says. First, it further shows us the connection between healing and the forgiveness of sins or salvation. It says, is any among you afflicted? Afflicted means in trouble or suffering hardships. If you are suffering hardship, he says, anybody afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? This James 5 and 13 now. Uh, well, this verse is verse 14. He says, if, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of what? Faith shall do what? Save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. Watch this. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. So you see the connection between forgiveness of sins and healing. If you believe your sins are forgiven, then you also need to believe your body is healed. He didn't just come. Watch this. Your body only begun to experience sickness after sin. Before Adam sinned, he never got sick. So sickness is as a result of sin. So if Jesus could forgive you of the sin, then every consequence of sin, he also took care of as well. So if I am saved from sin, now some of you all know this. You are not saved, and I don't have time to go deeply into this, so don't, some of you all religious people are going to be mad at me for this. You are not saved from sinning. You are saved from sin. And but you are saved from sin, but yet you sin. It is not sinning you are saved from. You are saved from the state or condition of sin. And as you grow in your salvation, you stop sinning. It is a process. But you have to first accept 
I am saved from sin. And as you grow in your relationship with God, then you will find yourself not doing what you used to do and now doing things you never did before. So once you are saved from sin, you have a right to healing. Now watch this. Watch this. When did salvation come? At the cross. Before the cross, nobody was saved. Y'all talk to me now. Before the cross, nobody was a Christian. The blood of Jesus had to be shed in order for people to be saved. Y'all, y'all listening to me? Now, now, now listen. You don't come to church to tell the preacher what to preach. If you come, you got to accept what God got to say to you. You just come open. And God has to save somebody's life today. And it may be yours in the future. Watch this. So, so if salvation happened at the cross, healing was before the cross. Because Jesus was going around healing all these people from all kinds of diseases and all kinds of sicknesses before they were saved. So people trying to make you believe you suffering from the sickness you're going through because you ain't saved or because you ain't spiritual or because you ain't holy. But these people were unholy but still experiencing healing. You don't get healed because you're perfect. You get healed because you believe. That's why he said to them, be it done unto you according to your faith. So you may say, Pastor, I ain't got it all together. I don't care where you come from and what you're dealing with right now. The blood of Jesus can find you and the power of God will heal you, deliver you, and set you free no matter what you've been doing. And sometimes it takes God showing you his love to get you delivered. So God will heal you in your messed up state so he can show you how much he loves you and show you that he wants a relationship with you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, our nations are sick. The Bahamas is plagued with cancer. And just about every type of disease you can think of. Mental, physical, and spiritual sickness. I believe the sicknesses we see plaguing the earth is not as much a physical or medical issue as much as it is a spiritual matter. I am believing God for national healing like I am believing God to heal our church. But here's what the Bible says, and you know it well. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will do what? Hear from heaven, and then I can do what? I will forgive their sins. I will for do what for? And then I will do what? Whenever people turn back to God, he forgives them for their wrongdoing and he also allows that forgiveness to be accompanied with healing. Here again we see forgiveness attached to healing. Not just on a personal level, but now on a national level. We can let our country one while and forget God and put other things ahead of God, but it will only result in more sickness. As nations move away from God, sicknesses start to plague the nation more. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And that's why nations around the world are experiencing things, and the doctors throwing their hands up and saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know what's going on because it ain't necessarily a medical issue. It's a spiritual issue. And he said, you got to call on me and cry out to me and humble yourself and come back to me. And when a nation come back to God, then healing will start to come back to that nation. If we keep putting other things ahead of God and not acknowledging God as as number one in the Bahamas, then one of the consequences of that is sickness and diseases plaguing our nation. And everywhere you turn, somebody griping about some ailment, got to take some medication because we have moved away from Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And as a result of that, the nation is sick. But whenever we humble ourselves and call on God,
God and believe him for deliverance, he says, when I forgive you, I'll heal you. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell. There's too much base in this. And all the nations that forget God. Ladies and gentlemen, on every level where you see repentance, forgiveness, and salvation, you will see healing. And you will see prosperity. Because salvation in God's mind means wellness. Salvation in God's mind means what? If I am saved, I am well. I ain't just saved, I am well. I ain't just saved, I am well. I am whole. Financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, but you got to believe it like you believe to be saved. Third John 1 and 2 says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you do what? And be in what? As your what? So the soul prospering is salvation. So he says, as your soul prospers, I, I, I want you to prosper. And I want you to be in good health. So your soul should not be prospering in isolation of your body. If you are spiritually alive, that's supposed to affect your body. That's supposed to affect your health. That's supposed to affect your mind. That's supposed to affect your finances. Are you all hearing me in here today? Do not just settle for salvation is what I'm trying to tell you. There are other benefits that come along with salvation and you've got to believe God and tell the devil, I'm not settling. Bring my house up. That's what. Watch this. Mark 16 and 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe the salvation. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Then watch this. They shall lay hands on the, and the sick shall. Watch this. Who is he talking to? They that believe. He says, these signs shall follow them that. These signs shall follow them that. And the final thing he says in verse 19 is that they will lay, in verse 17 or 19, they will lay their hands on the sick, and the sick shall. I need you to put your hand on somebody next to you and tell them, neighbor, I agree with you today that your body function in total and complete health. Tell them, I believe that as my hand rests on you, the hand of God is upon you. And no sickness can dwell in your body. I need a praise if you believe he said they'll drink any deadly thing so you eating stuff and ingesting stuff and and there are germs in it and poison in it that ain't supposed to kill you witchcraft in your food can't kill you they can show what they want in it, but this book said, I can eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm me. Look at your neighbor say, it's real, but it can't work on me. Witchcraft is a real force. It's a demonic power, but according to the book, I can ingest it in my body. Watch this. And instead of it killing me, my body will kill it. Because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells in me and nothing coming into me is able to kill me. So there's some people who've been waiting on you to drop down long time and you still standing up and they're trying to figure out how you still moving, how you still going, how you still surviving. But they do not know that I'm a covenant child of God. I'm a blood bought saint of the most high God and no weapon form against me. They thought your business was going to dry up. They thought your marriage was going to fall apart. They thought your life would have been in the rumble. They thought it was going to cost you to lose that job and not get that promotion. But when you under this blood covering, when you are a child of the most high God, witchcraft power. Now I need 
need a war cry in this place today. Take your seats. It says, you will take up serpents. You will take up serpents. And he only talking about the animal, it's talking about the reptile, it's talking about people with serpent spirits. To take it up means you will take it in your hand and you will control it. It means you have authority over it. Stop running from snakes. You got power over them. Stop being scared of snakes. Well, I ain't going there. There's too much snakes there. No, baby. When I show up, I got power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers up there. You better go to work tomorrow with your head up and your chest and until all the snakes, I got a foot for you. I wish I could preach. Shake your neighbor, say neighbor. I got a foot for a snake. They will raise their head in my house. They will raise their head on my job. But God gave me an anointed foot. To... When somebody pick up your foot and just slap it on the ground and tell the snake I'm crushing your head because I shot them. to mess up your marriage and mess up your children and mess up your house and mess up your mind and mess up your life. The devil is a liar. Take your seats. You have an anointing for snakes. Tell him bring it on. If you want to see the power of God, bring it on. If you want to see how big my God is, bring it on. If you want to see how great my God is, bring it on. Because greater is he on the inside of me than he that's in the world and you never know how great your God is until the devil sends something against you and sometimes God will allow the enemy to send something against you just to show everyone around you how big your God is all right take your seats I feel his glory in this place. I feel his glory in this place. Now watch this. Psalm 105 and 37 says, He brought them forth. He brought them out. This is a, this is a, this is a reference to salvation. He saved them from Pharaoh and out of the land of Egypt. And he brought them out with silver and gold. And there was none feeble. Listen how the New Living Translation puts it, Sandra. The Lord brought his people out of Egypt. That's out of the world. Loaded with silver and gold. Somebody say loaded. Loaded. And not one among the tribes of Israel even stumbled. I like the word loaded. I prophesy that in this season of rain, God is going to make sure you are loaded with all good things. Now that may not be for your neighbor. If that's a word for you, I need you to act like you received the word of the Lord. And when you finish shouting, look at someone and tell them, I'm loaded, man. I ain't lacking nothing. I ain't running out of nothing. I ain't hemorrhaging nothing. I don't need nothing. Because my God has supplied all of my needs. And Take your seat. Now, Psalm 68 and 19. Psalm 68 and 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits even the God of our salvation the God of your salvation will load you with benefits watch this 
you are, so, you are not just supposed to be loaded, but every day you are supposed to be reloaded. He daily loads us with benefits. Watch this. When you wake up in the morning and pray, your attitude should be, Lord, thank you for loading me up today. So that whatever I need for today, you will give me this day my daily bread. And that's why prayer should be early. Watch this. And daily. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, prayer. This week, this week has to be early, to be early. and daily. Because when you go to pray, you go in to get your reload for the day. But if you pray too late, what you needed for the day, you won't have when... Oh, God. <laughs> daily prayer reloads the believer... And positions us for daily provisions. Whether it's strength, wisdom, peace, watch this, patience, favor, a connection, a parking space, an approval, or whatever it may be. When you pray, God loads your spirit up with whatever it needs for that day. Now we're talking with rain, right? I need y'all to look at Deuteronomy 28 and 12. I never saw this. I read it but never saw it. I read it but never saw it. Deuteronomy 28 and 12. Watch this. The Lord shall do what? Come on y'all read with me. The Lord shall do what? What? The, the Lord shall open unto you. His good treasure. Now watch this. What's the first thing that come with the treasure box? To, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season. We've been talking about rain for the last several weeks. But I never knew rain was a treasure from heaven. And so what God said in July, I'm getting ready to open up my treasure box. And when I open my treasure box, I'm about to release rain over my people. One of the treasures of heaven, ladies and gentlemen, is rain. Another treasure of heaven is blessing the work of our hands. It says he will bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. One of the treasures of heaven, watch this, is blessing the work of your hands which means you will be successful and productive in whatever you do. Another treasure of heaven, it says, is living in such abundance that we become so wealthy that we become wealth distributors. Where we no longer live in debt. We no longer borrow to survive. Which is bad debt. We will borrow for good debt. But the Bible says we will lend and not borrow. Look at your neighbor say neighbor. God is turning your hand over in this season. Your hand has been like this for a long time. Needing to receive something and needing some help. But the Lord said, I'm turning your hand over because you won't be the one who needs. You can be the one in power to supply needs. He says, I'm going to make you a wealth distributor because I trust you to get things through you. You're going to be an agent through which I release my treasures to the rest of the world. Somebody turn your hand over and say, I'm not just a receiver, but I'm a giver because I've been abundantly supplied. In other words, he says, he says, you will lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. In other words, when people think money, your name is going to come to mind. You all didn't hear that. God's about to set you up in such a way that when people think prosperity and they think wealth, and they think success 
your name is going to be the first my name that comes to mind because God is about to position you, watch this, to lend and not borrow. When people need money, they come into you because you are going to be financially empowered to get it done. Watch this. Why is this important? The Bible says the rich rules over the poor. The rich has influence over the poor. And in any local economy, the most influential people are supposed to be God's people. Because God gives his people power or the anointing to get wealth. The upper echelon, you're only going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway as the Holy Spirit gave it to me. The upper echelon of any society is and should be those who make up the constituency of the kingdom of God in any society. Because we operate by higher laws and principles. Not because we think we better than people, but because the laws and principles that we live by are higher laws. We live by the law of love. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We live by the law of forgiveness. We live by the law of purity. When you live by the word of God, you live by higher laws than people in the world. Which means the upper echelon of society are the people under the sound of my voice. When God sends rain, he places the economy of nations in the hands of his people who he is reading upon. You will be so wealthy, watch this. This can be crazy, but I'm going to say it. That you will be able to pay off the national debt and not feel it. I need some radical people to just receive my reckless faith. Okay. Okay. The other benefits of rain is... You shall be the head and not the tail. This is verse 13. You shall be above only and that you shall not be beneath. If you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to observe to do them. Listen to Deuteronomy 7 and 14. I read it earlier. Thou shall be blessed above all people. In other words, whenever you go, wherever you go as a child of God, you will be the best. Because you are blessed above all people. Wherever you go as a child of God, you will be on top because you are blessed above all people. Wherever you go as a child of God, you will be the cream of the crop because you are blessed above all people. Wherever you go, you will outperform everyone else because you are blessed above all people. Wherever you go, you will be the model, the standard, the example, and the pace setter because you are blessed above all people. You will be the leader and the influencer because you are blessed above all people. Now, when you are blessed above all people, you ought to expect other people to hate you like they hated Joseph. But expect them not to, they, you expect them to hate you, but they will not be able to stop you because the blessing of the Lord is upon you. God says to tell you, no matter what people do, say or try, you will always come out on top. Because you are blessed, watch this, and the angels of the Lord are assigned to you to fight for you and to ensure heaven's covenant of success on your life always comes to pass. There shall not be male nor female barren among you. I declare in this congregation, males and females will be productive. We will not compete. We will complement one another. And whatever God has placed in your heart shall come to pass in your life. Now let me bring this in. Please know, God did not just bring his people out. Pay attention to how he brought them out. Which is a picture of how the coming out of every believer should be. The Bible says he brought them out salvation with silver and gold prosperity and there was none feeble among them healing and health 
The word salvation means deliverance both from sin and sickness. So believers who are saved by their faith in Jesus no longer die. You never die. You never die. Because absent from the body, you still living with the Lord. You never die. People who are unsaved, when they die, they're dead. Because they're separated from God. But as a believer, you never die. We go from a lesser life to the highest form of life, which is eternal life. When we are saved, we have access to healing, prosperity, peace, joy, and life. Ladies and gentlemen, we constantly see that health and prosperity are connected to salvation. The enemy keeps us ignorant of this so that we remain religious and not victorious. Oh, bless his name. Help me, Holy Spirit. He wants us to remain religious but not victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare we will not be religious. We will be victorious. I may not dot every I and cross every T. I may not have it all together. I may not do everything right, but I declare I'm going to walk in victory, in power, and in authority. I may not please everybody, but ladies and gentlemen, you are anointed to live in. Okay, let's wrap this up. Hey, guy, two and six tells us that in any house filled with the glory of God which is the fullness of who God is there should be at least two things go look it up when you have a chance one peace and two prosperity and other, now all y'all who say oh he preaching that prosperity gospel I preach in the Bible yeah. ain't nothing I say I give you scripture for In other words, God can't be in a place and peace and prosperity be absent. The reason we often don't see this, see this is because we are either ignorant of it or we lack faith for it. Peace and prosperity are byproducts of the glory of God in our lives. How is peace and prosperity then important to health? Peace is important to health because many of our health issues are stress related. Prosperity is important to health because many of our stresses are connected to the lack of resources or toiling to get it. Prosperity is also important because whenever there is great poverty in the world, wherever there is great poverty in the world, go check it out, you always find great disease and sickness. Sickness and poverty go together. Look at all the rural parts of the world. Wherever there's great poverty, there's great sickness. So the devil wants people poor so he can keep them unhealthy. But I'm declaring God is selling us prosperity along with hell because we ain't going to be poor, needy, and broke down. Prosperity is also important because the way the system of the world is designed, healthy living is extremely expensive. Yeah. Insurance is expensive. Yeah. Medical attention to maintain your health is expensive. So without prosperity, your health can be compromised. Yeah. Hey, guys, says, God says, in this temple, I release my glory. In this house, I will release my glory. Let's understand that the house God is talking about releasing his glory in, that will bring peace and prosperity. It's not the physical temple. Because the New Testament understanding of the temple of God is the body. The Bible says in Acts 7 and 48, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in your body. 
That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we can be in a theater and experience God in all of his power, in all of his glory, while other people who are in religious temples can't see it. So the house God wants to fill is not the wood and the stone, it's your God's residence on earth is not buildings. It's bodies. Oh man, I wish I could say this one more time. Yo, help me say this to your neighbor, please. Tell him, neighbor, God's residence on earth is not a building. It's a body. God lives in you. He don't reside in this. So wherever you go, he go. Which is why your body needs to be healthy. One, because God lives there. And two, you need a healthy body to be able to contain and carry the weight of his glory in your life. I exercise and work out because whenever I am weary, weak, or tired, I can't operate in high level of anointing. If I'm tired, the anointing can't work heavily in my life. The glory of God can be seen strongly in my life. Jesus said he felt virtue or strength leave his body when the woman with the issue of blood touched him. He often sent the multitudes away and the disciples away so he can refresh himself. He was asleep on the boat one time because in order to operate in high levels of the anointing, he needed rest. Elijah was depressed and wanted to die and God made him sleep. Because he wasn't really discouraged or depressed. He was just tired. You have to know when to stop, to pause and rest. Your greatest success is connected to your rest. That is why the psalmist says, be still and know. And you gain greater knowing or knowledge in your resting. You think if you go more, you will accomplish more. But if you rest, you will be sharper, think clearer, be able to go longer, take more, endure more, thus producing more. Some of you are not sick, discouraged, or depressed. You need rest. And the Lord said to tell some of you, if you rest, you will enjoy supernatural success. Because sometimes your constant going is a subconscious lack of faith. Thinking if I don't get it, then it ain't going to happen. If I don't do it, it ain't going to work. Because you factor God out. We must work but not toil. We must trust God to take the toil out of our work and find rest in our success and success in our rest. You are not performing at your optimal because you need a break. And you celebrate the fact that you are always on the go. It makes you feel like you are significant. But you are heading to an early grave and will be a short-lived success story. Because even Jesus who was very fit, which is why he could endure the cross so long, he needed to sleep and rest. Take your vacation. I'm going to say it one more time. Take your faith. I know you're looking to run over the floor, but I came to give you some practical stuff because you don't understand how your physical body is affecting your spirituality. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, take your rest. Some of you for the next three days as you fast need to cut your phone off. You need to shut your email down. You need to cut off a of social media. It's messing your head up and it's messing your body up and you can't think and grow rich. There's a book by, by a wealthy man by the name of Napoleon Hill. It's called Think and Grow Rich. If you don't grow, you don't become rich. Your life don't improve. But to grow, you got to think. But if you are stressed out, overwhelmed, and tired, 
your mind is not functioning at its optimum. And you are stressed. And watch this, it's affecting your marriage. You can't even perform in your home. Glory to God. You know you are more talented. You are more skillful. You have the power to produce more. And you are unable to produce it. And you think you need to pray harder. Or worship harder. Or go harder. No, you need to rest. Stand your feet, I'm done. I believe God has us fasting every month because apart from giving us the ability to gain spiritual access to the resources of heaven as we deny and weaken the flesh and its appetite there are also many health benefits when we fast and God wants a healthy church both spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally and financially A study by Medical Today says when you fast, the first thing that happens, and all of you know this one, and this is the one a lot of you women will be excited about, is you experience weight loss. I got you. I got you. You don't need, say it again. No you don't need no surgery. You don't got to pull nothing, tuck nothing. Watch this. Secondly, you lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. You improve your heart health. When you fast, you get improved brain health. When you fast. There's a reduced risk of cancer when you fast. There are changes to the function of your cells and genes and hormones when you fast. You reduce stress and inflammation when you fast. It induces cellular repair processes and watch this, it improves longevity. When God gave certain promises in the Bible, he also implemented certain laws and principles to guarantee their fulfillment. Many health promises listed in the Bible, like that of long life. I will satisfy you with, but they are connected to principles. One of them being fasting. We are eating ourselves to death. God knew the dangers of our fallen nature and what it would get us into and implemented certain principles to help us live well. And one of them was the importance of denying ourselves food for a prolonged period, which results in good health and spiritual benefits. Watch this. Moses fasted for 40 days on a mountain. The Bible says he neither ate nor drank for 40 days. When he came down, his skin was brighter. He looked healthier. Now I know, you, I know the Bible says the glory of God shone on him. And that is, it did occur. But you could see the health emanating from his body because he spent 40 days with no food in the presence of God. Now watch this. On the mountain, he had to hew out two tablets of stones, two heavy tablets of stone. And he had to climb down this mountain carrying these stones. Wow. How could you go without food for 40 days and have strength, number one, to climb down a mountain but with two heavy stones in your hand? Because it improves your body physically. Finally, after 40 days of fasting, Jesus was able to confront and conquer the enemy 
but he was able to overcome and conquer certain desires of the flesh. He attracted the ministry of angels and was able to walk in the power of the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, God says, I want this congregation to believe me and pray for 100% health in this congregation. The other day, the other day, we just inducted 20 mothers in our, on our mother's board. Some of them are up to 88, 90, 90 years of age. One day we will celebrate their life on this earth and they will transition to heaven. But they don't have to go sick. And the Lord said, deviate from the message you were getting ready to preach. And go and challenge my people to believe me that I will strengthen their bodies. Heal their bodies. Heal their minds. And I'm about to end and here's where I'm going to end. Most of you won't be honest with this because this ain't necessarily something we like to admit. But most of us are struggling with emotional sicknesses that are damaging our bodies. This is the, this, I'm going to say this and this is going to mess you up. Some of you are too bitter to be healed. The grudge in your heart is keeping the healing from your body. And the people in your life who encourage you to be mad and angry and bitter toward other people are helping you to kill yourself. You have to forgive for your own healing and your own health. You have to smile for your own healing and health. You have to laugh for your own healing and health. So you go into work tomorrow with a chip on your shoulder. You come to church with a chip on I ain't talking to them. Because you want them to know there's a vibe, there's a problem. But while you're doing that to them, you're doing something to you. And you're killing yourself. In black cultures, we are dying because we are angry. And they only guns and knives because while you're putting a gun on me, your heart is killing you. You put your mouth on me, but your heart is internally destroying you. And it's hereditary because children take on the vibes of their parents. And friends, let me tell you something. I may love you, but you ain't going to make your enemies my enemies when I have no reason to be enemies with them. You will make me mad at something I don't know nothing about. You will have me bitter and angry at something I don't know anything about. And I'm challenging you. Because sometimes when you tell your friends, you are the one who's wrong. And you need to forgive and let that thing go. And save your own self. You can't bring your gift before the altar and have odds against people and expect God to hear you. When you believe in God for victory in your life, tell people, honey, whatever going down, I'll pray about it. But I don't need to hear about it because I don't need nothing to clog up the pipeline to heaven because I need to... Are you letting petty things block your healing and block your deliverance and block your victory because it ain't that serious you letting an ex-wife or ex-husband keep you in bondage and the ex has eliminated you and you think you're hurting them. But unforgiveness is a self-destructive mechanism. It's self-sabotaging. It's self-undermining. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So the devil ain't attacking you because he don't need to attack you. You ain't no threat to the devil because you are self-sabotaging. The 
look at your neighbor and tell them, I can talk to you and love you for me. Now this may sound selfish, but I can talk to you and I can love you and I can forgive you and I can smile and I can laugh and I can have a good time. Not for you, but I need this for me because that's medicine to me. That's medication for me. I'm coming to you and I'm going to throw my arms around and the worse you are, the better I'm going to be because I can't allow you, watch this, to destroy me spiritually or physically. One side of your mouth you said, I shall live and not die. On the other side, you're killing yourself with bitterness. But today I declare healing over this house, deliverance over this house, victory over this house. And the things in your heart will not destroy your life. The truth of God's word is filling your heart and filling your mind and giving you life. Lift your hands everywhere. I rebuke arrogance and pride. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Healing in this house. Healing in this house. Healing in this house. Healing in this house. Your father died with sugar diabetes. Now he's trying to take you out. Your mother died with heart problems. Now he's trying to take you out. Your, your grandmother died with cancer. Now he's trying to take you out. High blood pressure, stroke is trying to kill you. But the devil is a lie. I command healing in this house. I command victory in this house. I command wholeness in this house. I speak it over your life. I speak it over your life. It is well from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It is well. It is well. Somebody lift out and receive that over your life. That it is well. It is well in your home, in your mind, in your soul, in your body, in your spirit, in your marriage. Healing is coming everywhere. He'll heal your broken home. He'll heal your broken life. He'll mend it back together. I declare it is well, it is well, it is well today. You're gonna smile again, you're gonna laugh again, you're gonna rejoice again, your life is gonna be exciting again, your life is gonna move again, your life is gonna advance again, your life is gonna bloom again, your life is gonna be fruitful again. I need somebody to receive that. Fruitfulness is coming to your life. Fruitfulness is coming to your life. Fruitfulness is coming to your life. The words of people who spoke against you. I hear the Lord saying they will fall to the ground and the expectation of the wicked shall surely perish when somebody lifts your voice and receive the word of the Lord over your life and speak healing over this If you know somebody who is sick and you want to believe God for them, I need you to receive it healing over this house. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the, the cancer cells. I command them to dry up. Come here, Philip. I know the hour is late, but y'all just carry me just a few more minutes. We believe God today that victory is in the room. Victory is in the room. Victory is in the room. Can I get some people to agree with me today? 
Glory be to your name. We declare this well. If two of us shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Glory be Lift your hands, Philip. How many you believe? How many you believe God can reverse doctor's reports right in this room right today? How many you believe God can change diagnosis and prognosis right in this place today? Oh, come on, Revolution Church. I need you to raise your voice and help me give God the glory that it is well. Lay your hands on her. Let's believe God today. That it is Lord, she stands as a symbol for everyone else in this place that are fighting and wrestling with their health. You said you will take sickness from among us. Let it start with Philip and Newton today. And let it spread all across this room. You said if two of us shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. And one can chase a thousand, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. I am believing you today that as we walk under this door, under these doors, that we are leaving sickness and diseases and infirmities in this place. You nailed it to the cross, and today we declare that it dies in our lives in the mighty name. Jesus and we declare victory and we proclaim victory and we give you the glory for it in advance in Jesus' name would somebody praise God today would somebody give God the glory today would somebody give God the glory today somebody give There's a healing cloud over this place. There's a healing cloud over this place. There's a healing cloud over this place. I need all of you who can to point in this direction. Our children and our teenagers are over here. I need y'all to help me cancel anything plan and conspired of the enemy against the next generation come on cover them cover our children cover our children cover our children thank you that they are saved they prosper and they are healed in the mighty name Jesus. Seal them in your blood. Seal them in your blood. In Jesus' name. And for the glory of God. Would you clap your hands and thank God for our children? For our teenagers? That they are covered? The hand of God is upon them. Lord, I pray for every minister, every pastor, every ministry worker. Every clergy. Those from the Rock of Ages family. As you do it in Revolution Church. Let healing break out in Rock of Ages. I pray that in New Orleans, they will be known as the church to go to when you want to see the power of God in your body. Take sicknesses from their midst. As you do it in here, do it over there. Heal families. 
heal marriages. And we thank you for it in advance. Now as we leave this place, but not your presence. Cover your people. Let angels surround Thank you that you have built up our immunity through your word. Anything in the atmosphere, things that were trying to rise in our bodies. Thank you that we are healed and we are whole. As we leave this place, go ahead of us make crooked places straight make rough places smooth cause mountains and hills to be brought low valleys to be exalted let your glory be revealed and let all flesh see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and the people of God say God bless you God keep you in Jesus name